Hello there, my fellow Space Marine Captains, and welcome back to another lore video from Warhammer 40k. Relatively recently, I finally got around to making a video on the Space Marine Battle Barge. A lot of you seem to enjoy that as well, since in that video you voted for more Space Marine capital ships. So, here I am today, delivering exactly that with today's topic being probably the most ubiquitous type of vessel that the Adeptus Astartes use. Ladies and gentlemen, the Strike Cruiser. Do stay until the end as well and vote for a future topic. Before I begin though, I wanted to take a moment and give another helping hand to a friend of my channel. His name is Sleepy Sack and he is also a YouTuber who makes 40k lore videos. I would even say he sounds better than me, because he actually has a British accent. He does make high quality videos on several topics, including Space Marines, Forces of Chaos and more. So if you wanna hear someone else's voice for a change in some interesting videos, do check out Sleepy Sack. All that being said, let us proceed with today's topic, shall we? A strike cruiser is usually the second biggest vessel usually deployed by the fleets of the Adeptus Astartes after the battle barge. While a space marine chapter only rarely deploys something as big and powerful as a battle barge, the strike cruisers of the Adeptus Astartes are a far more common sight. Although still, anything to do with space marines is a rare sight in the overall Imperium. Often the arrival of a strike cruiser is enough in and of itself to quell the defiance of a rebellion in a star system. The Astartes are very quick to act, if the surrender of the Emperor's foes is not rapid enough and immediate. Strike cruisers are fast, relatively lightly armed vessels, which mass slightly less than the Imperial Navy's Dauntless class light cruiser. The main function of a strike cruiser is to provide rapid response and they are usually the first responders to arrive on a threatened Imperial world. They are capable of carrying up to one full company of Space Marines, as well as all their vehicles and equipment. They have been known to deploy their full contingent of Astartes within only 20 minutes of arriving in orbit of a planet. Just like a battle barge, the Strike Cruiser is not an actual class of starship, or a specific standardized configuration of weapon systems and other capabilities. They actually represent a large range of different Space Marine vessels in the Light Cruiser Tonnage class and are used for the same basic missions. First and foremost, a Strike Cruiser has to be fast. With a substantial troop transport capacity and multiple means of delivering those troops to a surface of a planet. Whether this is teleportation, drop pods, or launch bays and thunderhawks. Within the demand of these basic operational parameters, the strike cruisers can actually take a wide array of different physical shapes. Although most of them have been outfitted with the mighty bombardment cannon to support landing troops from orbit. Different Astartes chapters possess different kinds of strike cruiser each one shaped by the chapter's long centuries of tradition and varying tactical doctrines. The strike cruisers we're gonna discuss today represent several types in use by multiple factions. The actual concept of the strike cruiser is believed to rely heavily on the original plans for a vessel called the Ebon Drake during the Great Crusade. This was a new type of vessel originally classified as an assault cruiser, developed, surprisingly, by the 18th Legion, the Salamanders, just a few years before the start of the Horus Heresy. It is said that the Primarch Vulcan himself had a hand in the Ebon Drake's creation, and also gifted its plans to several other Primarchs and their legions, but by the time of the start of the Heresy, only a few prototypes were built. It would only be at the beginning of the Great Scouring in 019 M31, when the victorious loyalists set out to purge the galaxy of the traitors, that the design of the Ebon Drake was refined. This was in preparation for the construction of many similar vessels for the newborn Adeptus Astartes chapters of the second founding. The first of the strike cruiser types we're gonna talk about today is the so-called Vanguard. 
The Vanguard Cruiser, also called the Vanguard Class Light Cruiser, is a variant of the Astarte Strike Cruiser, which has been refitted for long-range operation without the benefit of escorts or other naval support. This is a variant that is primarily used by fleet-based chapters of Space Marines that often need to send detachment of Astartes on long-range missions far away from the chapter fleet. They have improved thrusters and defensive turrets, but this comes at the expense of weaker offensive weaponry. As a result, a Vanguard is less capable of undertaking planetary assaults like a regular strike cruiser can, because their weapons have been optimized for ship-to-ship -ship combat, for planetary exploration, reconnaissance, and boarding. Thus, a Vanguard is used as a scouting vessel which can operate independently or as a heavy escort as a part of a large space marine fleet. It also comes in at least three main classes. The Mark I is armed with torpedo launchers, macro cannons, and launch base for attack craft. The Mark II is armed with lances, macro cannons, and attack craft launch base. And the Mark III has a bombardment cannon, macro cannons, and attack craft launch base. A couple of famous Vanguard cruisers we know about from the Badab War. The first one is the Red Harbinger, which belonged to the Firehawks chapter. This vessel was at first disabled and then captured by the Mantis Warriors chapter in 350, 904, M41. This was also an incident which helped spark the internecine conflict known as the Badab War. The Obsidia is a vessel belonging to the Salamanders. It was in 838, 912, M41, during the Badab War, that a cruiser of the Executioner's Chapter called the Night Hag and their battle barge called the Phaeton's Wrath were hunting a pair of damaged Sons of Medusa strike cruisers in an asteroid field on the edge of the Eridine Cataract. This was when the Salamander's vanguard cruiser Obsidia suddenly brought itself between the two sides and requested a ceasefire. After a very tense standoff, the Sons of Medusa withdrew and the executioners agreed to a parley with Loyalist Command. This was one of the actions that led to the eventual withdrawal of the executioners from the Badab War on the side of the secessionists and their restoration to the Emperor's grace. Another unique type of strike cruiser is the one used by the Grey Knights. The Grey Knights, arguably the most secretive of all the Space Marine chapters, maintain their base on Saturn's moon on Titan, within the Sol system itself. They are close to Mars, and the primary shipyards of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Therefore, their strike cruisers are very advanced technologically, utilizing the best weapons, armor, warp drives, void shields, and all the other systems available in the Imperium, even by the already high technological standards of the Space Marines to begin with. This advanced technology is also augmented by powerful enchantments to protect them from the perils of the Immaterium. Because of their advanced engines and warp drives, as well as their highly trained navigators, the vessels of the Grey Knights are the fastest vessels in the Imperium, and they can respond to a demonic incursion long before any other Imperial force. The starships of the Grey Knights are also piloted by the most trusted and finest navigators of the novice nobility, capable of steering the most efficient courses through the unpredictable warp. The fleet of the Grey Knights is based at a broadsword station in orbit above the moon of Titan. Finally, we arrive at a so-called Punisher-class strike cruiser. Now, the Punisher is not actually a space marine vessel but rather a cruiser used by the Adeptus Arbites. They form the backbone of the Arbites fleet, and the Punisher is usually a patrol vessel used to bolster local PDF forces, put down rebellions, hunt down pirates, and transport high-ranking officials. The design of the Punisher is very similar to that of a regular Space Marine strike cruiser, although the Punisher does have less armor and heavy weapons than an Astartes counterpart. The ships, however, do maintain specialized scanning arrays designed to locate pirate bases and heretic strongholds in the isolated regions of space. 
Compared to their Imperial Navy counterparts, the Adeptus Arbidae ships are relatively few in number, and thus also rarely participate in any major engagement or fleet action. Nevertheless, the ships boast an array of torpedoes and bombardment cannons, in addition to a limited amount of attack craft, which are used primarily for point defense and scouting. One such vessel, called the Inviolable Retribution, saw service during the Gothic War, where it did prove invaluable in evacuating the world of Bellatus. For today's poll, it is gonna be just a binary choice, to make it easier for you. So, for the next video in this series, what would you like to see? Option A, a third video on space marine vessels, which will probably focus on frigates and such. Or option B, another regular vehicle. To vote, just write down your choice in the comments below. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Space Marine Strike Cruisers for today. Are you a fan of these mighty vessels? Do you know any other facts about them? Do you find them more useful than a battle barge? What do you like or dislike most about them? Do share any of your thoughts, or questions if you have any, in the comments below as usual. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. You can also click the bell notification icon to stay more up to date. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor Protects.